One of the best ways you can get an edge in fantasy baseball on a weekly basis is to stream the right to start pitchers. Here's some of the guys who are not widely owned that might be available that I suggest picking up. Now keep in mind, schedules always subject to change. These are pitchers right now scheduled to start twice over the coming week. But we're going to start with some guys that are more highly owned and get down to some deeper options towards the end. Let's start with a guy I'm going to put my trust in, Tristan McKenzie for Cleveland. You look at his season, it's really disappointing up until his very last start. He's got a 4.34 ERA, 1.48 whip. And the uh, surface stats really aren't much better, to be honest. Currently has a 4.7% K minus BB rate. That is just bad. I mean, these numbers should not be even. There should be a significant advantage. You want more strikeouts than walks, a lot more strikeouts than walks. And he's done the opposite. His strikeout rate has plummeted this year and he's walking way too many guys. So then what happened this final start here? He went up against the red hot. Yes, Astros are now hot winning. The offense is alive. But yet, McKenzie was able to stifle them over seven innings, only allowed two runs and five hits. And that same start, he didn't walk batters, and he struck out batters. So is this a turning point for him? Is this just one fluky start? Well, I say this, obviously I'm recommending McKenzie because I believe in the talent. I mean, his season so far has been disappointing. Gotta remember he's coming off another injury plague season. It's been slow start for him. I trust in the stuff. I think he's a very good pitcher. When it all comes together, of course, inconsistency besides injuries have always been a problem for him, but maybe this is a turning point. But of course, I'm looking at the schedule too because instead of facing a hot team like the Astros, he's gonna get the Tigers and the White Sox. Tigers over the course of the season, bottom 10 in home runs, Bottom 12 in runs scored. Haven't really picked it up lately. A lot of guys still struggling to find their footing in that lineup. And then the White Sox. I mean, do I really need to explain that one? McKenzie may have gotten picked up in some leagues after his last start. But, you know, in those weekly waiver wire leagues, you could still put in a claim for him. Don't overspend. Again, we don't want to overreact to one game. But again, this is a guy who I believe in. I think that he will be much better over the course of the season. It's not characteristic of him what he's done so far. So I think he'll put better numbers up for sure this week. But even maybe going forward, this might be a guy that if he does well, you wind up keeping. If you love watching baseball and playing fantasy baseball, you probably love playing MLB The Show on PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. Well, the best place to get those stubs without paying full price is MMOAH.com. On top of their already discounted price, you get an extra 5% off by using code ENDGAME. You can build your perfect Diamond Dynasty even faster by clicking the link in the description below and using our promo code. This next choice might be the last time I have to talk about Jack Flaherty. Still mind boggled that he's available in half of all Yahoo leagues. And not just that his last start was amazing, obviously coming off that game. The revenge game against St. Louis where he struck out 16 Redbirds. But besides that, he's been flat out good all season long. There were two not so great starts, but again, those are just kind of peppered in between some really good starts. Now, the opposite of what I just said for McKenzie, that K minus BB rate was really bad. Jack Flaherty, yes, Jack Flaherty of the Tigers now owns the best strikeout minus walk rate in the majors, 30.6%, because his strikeout rate is really high, 34%, and his walk rate is an insanely low 3.4%. It doesn't get much better in terms of that discrepancy. So yeah, I'm buying into Flaherty as somebody who just should be picked up, which is why I talked about him on my waiver wire video. So if you haven't checked that most recent one out, I dig into him a little deeper there. If you're just looking to stream, maybe you're in a more shallow league, maybe you don't wanna buy fully in, but you're looking for a streamer, Obviously, he's got the stuff, but the schedule, well, he's going to face Cleveland, which I know the record says they're really good. Offensively, they have been good, but they are cooling down big time lately. Over the past week, they're averaging less than four runs per game. And let's face it, that Cleveland offense with what they've got there, they had been way overachieving. Our next start, Houston. Okay, we already know about the Astros. They've turned it around. They're starting to heat up. I can't say that's a great matchup. But at the same time, Tristan McKenzie just held him to two runs. Again, it's not like the Braves lineup. It's not something that I'm going to shy away from when a pitcher has been pitching as well as Flaherty. And here's the thing with Flaherty, why I like him as a waiver wire pickup straight up, not just a streamer, is no matter what, even if he doesn't have his best start, he's going to get you strikeouts. Now, Tyler Anderson of the Angels, not really going to get you many strikeouts, but he could deliver a pair of quality starts this week. Unlike Flaherty, or McKenzie, 
He's been Mr. Consistency, and that's the name of the game for him. It's he just doesn't get hit too hard. He never really looks dominant, especially because he doesn't strike out a lot of batters. That's the knock on him. But he is yet to give up more than three earned runs in a start this season. Plus, he typically does pitch at least six or seven innings most of the time. So quality starts, always an option wins. Uh, you never know, you know, Angels these days. I can't guarantee anything there, but you can never guarantee anything on that front. Anderson has kept his ratios really low. Again, this is one of those floor plays here as far as streamers. And his first start of the week, he gets the ice cold Pittsburgh Pirates. I mean, talk about a cold offense. The Pirates have only scored 11 runs over their past six games combined. They're hitting 164 over the past week. Plus, this is a lineup where most of their power hitters or somewhat scary hitters are left-handers. I definitely want to stream Anderson against Pittsburgh, and in fact, you might want to just stream any pitcher against the Pirates right now. Next matchup against Kansas City, it's kind of not here or there in the middle. An offense that could sometimes put up runs doesn't always, so I don't feel amazing about that start, but it's not going to scare me away either. So overall, I like Anderson. Again, you're going to lean more for the ratios than the Ks in this one. thing about Anderson is, no, he doesn't blow hitters away, but he's been really effective because as of right now, he has officially, according to StatCast, the best changeup in the game. That's right. In terms of run value right now, number one. You know, the velocity won't scare anybody, but man, he knows how to mix it up and keep hitters off balance with that change. Hey, if it works, it works. This is why he hasn't gotten picked up in more leagues because he's not a guy who will really make the highlight reels ever, even if he does have an impressive outing, but he's just so consistent. It's nice to have a guy like that at the back of your rotation. All right, staying in that same division, let's go with another lefty, though. He's been very underwhelming this year, Andrew Haney of the Rangers. Well, he's barely owned for a reason. 0-4 right now with a 5-10 ERA. And this is like the anti-Tyler Anderson this is somebody who can throw hard, can get punch outs, but sometimes gets himself into trouble. And consistency is definitely not part of his game. In fact, his first three starts of this season, he didn't even go five innings in any of them. But let's go back to the what have you done for me lately theory. His very last start finally lasted seven innings. Against a pretty good these days Washington lineup only gave up one run and started to look kind of like his former self. So maybe this is a case of a veteran just kind of getting into midseason form. So again, we have to ask, is this just an outlier on an otherwise so far bad season or is he finally starting to figure things out? You know what I'm going to say? I think it's the latter. It's not just that he went longer and had one good start. He hasn't even walked a batter in his last two outings. He's not getting himself into trouble. His whip is actually pretty good despite the bad ERA. Getting Oakland first this week, never a scary proposition. And then he gets Colorado. And I know at Coors Field is never something that you want to look forward to. But this year it's a little bit different over the past week Colorado has been a bottom five offense and they've got the second highest strikeout rate of the past week this is a game where Haney could thrive in fact this is two starts where it wouldn't shock me if Andrew Haney was one of the best if not the best two start streamers all right now let's look at a team that is still technically red hot although their win streak got snapped it's the twins now part of that resurgence it's mainly offense Still surprisingly to me, but their pitching, of course, has done their job too. Simeon Woods Richardson is a guy who's kind of stepped up and knows some people might say out of nowhere, but not really. Remember, this is a former high end pick, has been involved in two big trades for ace type pitchers. He was traded to the Blue Jays for Marcus Stroman a few years ago, and then he got flipped from the Jays to the Twins for Jose Barrios. Now, not straight up one for one deals, mind you, but still, he was a big part of those packages, you know, expecting him to at some point become a mid rotation arm. Well, maybe it's happening now because so far he's looked pretty good. He's only allowed four earned runs so far in 14 and two thirds innings and got a 13 to four strikeout to walk ratio. Now, one thing that I've noticed, a key to his improvement over last year, again, this guy doesn't have extensive major league experience, but what we've seen overall is that he's using his slider more and the fastball less. And this is a good thing because it's not a guy who has a lot of velocity on that fastball, averages about 92 points something. Well, his slider is his best pitch and he's using it more frequently and it's working. And so while Minnesota may not continue to be as hot, so Woods Richardson has been effective in his couple of starts 
and he gets a nice upcoming slate here. Gets to face the Seattle Mariners, who have barely crossed the plate lately. They've only scored 15 runs in their last six games combined. And that's come with a 199 team batting average. And then the basically as bad Toronto Blue Jays, who still haven't put it together, they've only scored 16 runs in their last six, and they're batting 206 over the past week. I kind of want to see another good start or two, and again, I really think it could happen this week, but if Woods Richardson continues to be solid, he'll start to get picked up more and more, and I'll throw him out there as a must-add waiver wire pickup. And then for the desperate or very deep league owners, I kind of hesitate with this one, but got to throw out an option here in Colin Ray for the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, Ray is a 33-year-old journeyman. He's been with several teams. Got a career ERA of 4.52. So never was on the fancy radar coming into this season. I'd still, despite his early success, which I'll get into in a second, I'm still not quite sold because if you look under the hood, yeah, his run values are great. I mean, he's pitching, according to his actual production, amazing. And his expected stats are horrible. At some point, regression is going to hit, but maybe it won't happen this week. Now, he'll start out by facing the Royals, where he said that's an offense that's good, not great. Um, so I feel like he can get by in that situation. I'm a little nervous about that start if I had him, but I will say at the very least, it's going to be in KC. Kansas City, Kaufman Field is 26th in terms of home run park factor this year. And over the last three years, it's been 24th. It's not a place that's really considered a hitter's venue. Then the real reason I want to recommend Ray as a possibility is the second start against St. Louis. I know I keep talking about how bad St. Louis offense is, let me remind you, they're really bad. And also, this is the team that's had the fewest home runs in the majors this season. This is important because the one thing that Colin Ray has not done as well this year, other than not really striking batters out, is giving up home runs. He's given up five. He still managed to get away with a 3-0 record and really good ratios. But the home run ball has been his weakness. But you're talking about Two teams that probably won't really hit many home runs against him. So I think he can get by with some decent starts, maybe pull out a win or two. So I can't say I love this pick for the first start. Yeah, I got no problem firing up against the Cardinals or any pitcher against the Cardinals. Um, so be a little wary if you can set daily lineups and you just need someone to get you by towards the end of the week. I would prefer that. But Ray is a possibility here. And if for some reason you haven't watched the latest waiver wire video, it's still up. You can check it out right here.